Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Laura Pra from our Tobasura studios in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with our news and we go to straight to the Caribbean in Dominica because their campaigns are reaching a climax ahead of this Friday's general elections. Meanwhile, the ruling Dominica Labour Party has been holding several rallies this weekend and the government has said that free, fair and transparent elections are guaranteed on the 6th of December as they always have been in Dominica. That is in spite of a campaign by the opposition United Workers Party backed by the Secretary General of the Organization of American States to demand electoral reforms ahead of the polls. They offer a Dominica where a political party puts at stake the lives and the well-being of supporters just to further its political agenda and to seek to provoke confrontation with the police. A country in which UWP shamelessly tells lies to tear down our country in the eyes of the international world. Prime Minister Roosevelt Scary reminded Dominicans that his government has provided for the first time free education and transfer to all children in the country, as well as improved health care. Many of our grandparents and our families did not have access to health care in Dominica because they were owing use of means. When Roosevelt Scary became the Prime Minister, today what do we have? We have better health care in Dominica and free health care for our senior citizens and our children. And we go now straight to Rousseau in Dominica, the capital, because our special correspondent Alejandro Kirk is in Dominica to bring up us all the latest regarding these elections. Welcome Alejandro, we hear you. Greetings from Dominica at this time this small republic in the Caribbean uh, with only 80,000 people. Uh, Dominica is facing a political challenge this week. On Friday there is general elections and the incumbent Labour Party is facing um, a, a, a tough, tough uh, challenge by the workers, um, United Workers Party, which is a right-wing opposition. What, uh, what's at stake here? Why are we here covering this election? Because Dominica has been a staunch opponent of American U.S. intervention in Latin America against Venezuela, against Nicaragua, and now against Bolivia. The General Secretary of the Organization of American States, uh, Luis Almagro, um, has been trying to interfere with these elections, trying to push for um, an electoral reform and also to uh, impose observers from the OAS or on the elections. This has been refused by the government of Prime Minister Roosevelt Kerrit on the grounds that such an intervention provoked uh, a few weeks ago a coup in Bolivia based on reports that have never been substantiated about, about fraud in the elections uh, that took place in October in that country. The Labour Party has been in power for almost 20 years and it's been able to build a welfare state, free education, um, benefits like housing, uh, health care for everybody. Thank you, Alejandro. That's Alejandro Kir. We'll be keeping and hearing from him all over this week about regarding all of that is coming up from these elections. And now we move on to Colombia because after more than a week of anti-government protests, Colombians have joined in Latin American pod banging demonstration and initiative convened in several countries in the region. In Bogotá and other cities of Colombia, citizens expressed their disagreement with President Iván Duque's policies. Since the massive national strike held on November 21st, pot banging has become a symbol of the peaceful protest in Colombia. Citizens are also condemning police violence against their protests. And last week, the president called a national conversation with different sectors. But the strike organizers said this does not meet their demands. They are calling for broader talks, including citizen assemblies and councils. If the government wants a solution, then it needs to call on the National Strike Committee to negotiate. 
We are not going to stop. On the contrary, we will go on with more mobilizations, marches, other protests. We are going to do it all peacefully, reject all types of violence of any kind. And the Mexican president, Andres Manuel López Obrador, has marked his first year in government with an address to the nation from the Zócalo Square. Among other things, he talked about how his administration has changed the catastrophic security policies of the previous government. The executive has made an important change regarding security. Between 2006 and 2018, the president tried to solve crime with military and police action without dealing with the root of the problem, and the result was catastrophic. That strategy left many people murdered, disappeared, and injured, a human rights crisis. Mexico is still dealing with the consequences of that mistake policy. Let us not forget. Let us not forget that on February 2, 2007, Felipe Calderón ordered the armed forces to engage in what he called a war against drug trafficking. This irresponsible decision led to a battle with the organized crime that tried to clean out drug traffickers, whatever the cost. The result was a massacre. And educational institutions to all those who want to study at a higher level so that they can finish their studies. 100% access to higher education and zero rejections. That's why I'm very thankful to the city hall here for creating a university here in Mexico City to train and educate doctors and nurses. And the mothers of Central American migrants who disappeared in Mexico have set off on a caravan to search for their loved ones. Our correspondent caught up with them as they arrived in Mexico City. And now we have for you this story that he sent us. They set off from Mexico's southern border on November the 15th. Relatives looking for missing migrants from Central America. Antonio Alonso received news of his daughter, Juana, who left her home in Guatemala six years ago with the intention of reaching the United States. She was arrested by the authorities and accused of kidnapping. She has been in jail for six years in Reynosa. She wanted to realize the American dream. And look where she is now, in jail. Some have found no trace of their loved ones. Delcia Garcia has no idea where her 17-year-old son might be. He wanted to escape from poverty and violence in Honduras. My son wasn't able to get into the U.S. due to lack of money. Fifteen people from a criminal gang arrived and took him away. They beat him and took him with them. This 15th caravan organized by the Mesoamerican Migrant Collective Movement has helped more than 300 families reunite. Only on this occasion, five families have met up again. The mothers of the migrants organize in their countries of origin and search for their children. But they also look for other people. Some of them carry photos and other clues. They're asking the Mexican authorities to help them in their search. We get little or no help from our government. Our real help comes from the social organizations that give us a hand. According to the organizers of the caravan, there are between 30 and 70,000 migrants who have disappeared. We make a short break. Remember, follow us on Twitter at Telesur English and on my account at Laura Vitelesur. We'll be right back. With our news, we go to Chile, where hundreds of cyclists try to reach President Sebastián Piñera's residence on the night before his birthday in order to protest against his administration policies. 
Hundreds of Chilean cyclists expressed their rejection of the government repression of demonstrations just before the president's 70th birthday. The mass mobilization ended in Dignity Square, also known as Plaza Francia, Italia, I must say. And these, uh, the cyclists demonstrated under a slogan suggesting that it didn't matter how old the Chilean president is as he will continue to break his promises. And the Chilean carabineros used water cannons to repress this peaceful demonstration that took place in Plaza Italia, Italy Square, known as Dignity Square now. Against the administration led by Sebastián Piñera, protesters demanded government measures to increase the policy, the police and military presence on the streets of the country. This rally remained calm until the appearance of carabineros who violently repressed demonstrators despite the fact that they were carrying out a peaceful demonstration. And now we move on to Bolivia, where far-right figure Luis Fernando Camacho will be throwing his hat into the presidential race if and when elections are held. The president of the Pro Santa Cruz Committee submitted his resignation letter at a broad, broad meeting. Camacho was one of the main promoters of the coup against President Evo Morales and he is known for his Christian extremist views and for heading a racist and intolerant movement centered in the department of Santa Cruz and also in the Zona Sur uh, zone of the capital city, city of La Paz with a middle and upper class support base. It is not clear who will run for the citizen community party of Carlos Mesa representing another and not a nothing section of the country's right wing. And on Thursday, while speaking at a press conference at the Mexican uh, Journalist Club in Mexico City, where President Evo is exiled, he said that Interpol had issued a blue notice against him. He also said that he was unsure as to whether he could attend the inaugural proceedings for the president-elect Alberto Fernandez and said that he wouldn't be running for the presidency but says that the mass movement has the right to participate in the upcoming elections. I want to inform about this notification from these countries. A blue notification from Interpol. Argentina, Peru, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay, Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico. I am searched. There is an invitation from Argentina for the investiture of the elected president Fernandez. I still haven't decided. We will inform about our decision to participate or not. I am grateful for this invitation. It's an act of solidarity. I am not a candidate. I will not be a candidate for presidency. I understood the fear that they wanted us to have, but we have the right to participate to the elections, to organize ourselves. And an Argentine delegation in solidarity with the Bolivian people has been released its first, has released its first report after arriving to Bolivia on Thursday evening. The delegation has gone to the area of the Sencata massacre in the city of El Alto to hear from families of victims of human rights violations. The group from Argentina is made up of representatives from social movements, unions and human rights activists who have thus far found that there is no judicial investigation into the crimes committed in Sencata thus far. That's there, that there has been impunity and a cover-up of the human rights violation of the armed forces and police by judicial authorities. They also say they've heard evidence of persecution and torture of indigenous people and campesinos by the state and that people have been denied medical care because of their political ideology. There were just some of their reported findings so far. And now we go to Surinams because President Desi Buterse says he is the victim of a political game after a court found him guilty in absentia of murder. Supporters of Buterse welcome him home as he returned from a trip to China. The case related to the alleged killing of 15 adversaries after he took power in 1980. The president has denied those charges and says he will appeal. 
We are still in legal processing. We still need to streamline the appeal with the relevant experts. This will happen sometime later and not around 12 p.m. as we planned. And now we move on to Peru, where opposition leader Keiko Fujimori was released from jail on Friday after being in pre-trial detention for more than a year. She faces corruption charges linked to Brazilian construction firm Odebrecht. The country's constitutional tribunal, Peru's top court, ordered her release on Monday. Her release comes as Peru prepares for legislative elections in the month of January. President Martin Vizcarra dissolved Congress aiming a battle with opposition lawmakers over his anti-corruption campaign. Keiko Fujimori party held a majority in Congress before its dissolution. And like this we go for a second and very short break, just stay tuned with us. We are back with the news. This Sunday, President of Burkina Faso, Rock Cabore, confirmed on Twitter that 14 people were killed and some were several wounded on a protest charged by a terrorist attack. The gunman is not yet identified by the African nation has suffered attacks from Islamist extremist groups for years. The president expressed his sympathies to families of the victims in a tweet with who that said, I condemn the barbaric attack on the Protestant church of Hantoukoura in the department of Fouturi, which left 14 dead and several wounded. I extend my deepest condolences to the grieving families and wish a speedy recovery to the injured. And Malta's Prime Minister Joseph Muscat says he will resign in next year. In the next year, as a scandal intensifies after the murder of journalists in 2017, Muscat says he would ask his party to start the process of electing a new leader on January 12th, after which he will stand down as prime minister. Maltese citizens have been marching in the streets demanding the prime minister to step down. Meanwhile, his government has been criticized for the way of it handled investigations into the murder of Daphne Caruana Galizia, who was investigating corruption among senior politicians. In the coming period, we will initiate a process so that our country will have a new prime minister, a prime minister who will continue the work and the strong mandate of this government and continue to deliver the plan of the Maltese population approved in June 2017. I will write to the president of the Labour Party so that the process for a new leader is set for January 12, 2020. On that day, I will resign as a leader of the Labour Party. In the days after, I will resign as a prime minister. And at least one person has been killed and several injured in Iraq after security forces used tear gas and fire bullets to disperse protesters. These protesters, who included Muslim students, had gathered in the city of Nahaf when the police attacked them. More than 400 protesters, mostly young people, unarmed demonstrators, have been killed since mass anti-government protests broke out on October 1st. More than a dozen members of the security forces have also died in clashes. This Sunday, the Iraqi parliament accepted the resignation of the Prime Minister Abdel, Ab Adel Abdel Mahdi. I want a homeland. I want a fair rule. My heart is heavy. You are all thief and you need to be ruled out. And however, Iraq's oil minister, Thamer al Ghadban said that despite the two months of protest, the country is not facing any oil crisis. During the past two months, October and November, the oil minister faced challenges that were extremely complicated and difficult. However, the lessons lies in the results. The results are, as you can see since you are living in Baghdad, there are no oil derivatives crises across the country from the north to the south and from the east to the west. And on Sunday, anti-government protesters called for a rally outside the presidential palace of Baba to press President Michael Aoum to formally begin the process of forming a new government that's in Lebanon. Lebanon armed forces have deployed near the presidential palace east of Beirut, the capital, to prevent 
friction between rival Lebanese demonstrators while the stalemate in the formation of a government continues. Meanwhile, hundreds of anti-government protesters marched amid a deepening economic crisis. In the month before the protest banks, uh, protest banks began restricting access to dollars by a sparking a liquidity crisis. We've moved from the museum to a Riyadh al Sol Sodeco Martri Square to say yes to the staring Biden parliamentary conciliation and enough staling. The economic situation and the financial collapse can no longer put up with the trading of accusations among officials. They, the ruling party, won Al Hariri. Hariri has conditions while everyone has abandoned the people. It's time to form a clique government that can meet the demands of people. We march through all those roads to send a message that they can no longer threaten us with the secretary in war. We want to live in dignity. Daini. We are here at this protest to say that the civil war has ended in Lebanon and the different sets of warlords can no longer treat us this way to bring back this war. Secondly, we want to say to the political class and it's time to start the binding parliamentary consultations in order to name a prime minister from outside, the political class, including the former prime minister and the current prime minister, and to name a national character and foreign national government from honest people in order to get the trust of the revolutionaries who started those revolutions. And government supporters in Algeria have protested against the European Parliament's interference in the country's internal affairs. The protests came after the European Parliament on Thursday approved a resolution to express what it described as deep concern over human rights and the lack of freedoms in Algeria. Earlier, Algeria's Minister of Communication, Hassan Rabehi, took a swipe at the European Parliament and accused it of attempting to disturb Algeria's elections. Algeria will hold presidential elections on December 12th. Today we came here in a peaceful manner to defend Algeria, and we said that its sons are the ones who lead the country, not foreigners. Algeria is in need of a president who will lead it. We cannot stay without a president. And at least 24 people were killed in Tunisia when a bus plunged off a cliff into a gully. About 18 others were injured in the accident. Forensic experts were deployed to investigate the crash. The bus was traveling from Tunis to the town of Ain Draham near the border with Algeria. On this road, there are always accidents, especially trucks in general. There are always big accidents. We must find a solution for this road so that there are no more accidents. They are frightening accidents. What I saw today was first for me. And we continue in Tunisia. Hundreds of women march to call for an end to violence against women. The activists walk through the streets raising brooms and banging on pots and pans. They were demanding action from the government, including an adequate budget for programs that empower women. The issue of gender violence has come to the fore in Tunisia after videos emerged of a member of parliament apparently masturbating outside girls' school. Our demands are the demands of all women against violence directed at girls and women and all type of women. We are also here to protest economic violence, which has led to the impoverishment of our women, as well as violence against women who work in agriculture. We also hope the government would allocate budgets to execute these progressive laws, because without funding, these laws cannot come into effect. And on December 1st, South Africa commemorated World AIDS Day. This year, it's calling for patients with the disease to receive proper treatment. Patients were examined and treated at the event, and efforts to defeat the epidemic were commemorated. The infection rate has fallen from an estimated 270,000 in 2016 to 22, 222,000 in 2018, illustrating the progress made by HIV response programs in the country. Meanwhile, awareness and prevention activities also took place in Kenya and Rwanda, pointing out the, importance, the important role community play in educating about the disease. You should not be controlled by the virus. You're supposed to control the virus. People don't understand the power that they have within them. 
You see, if one can live a normal life, regardless of what they faced, what is my excuse, regardless of where I'm found or what my society says? It's a self-belief that is bringing people down. Like this, we come to the end of Mr. 3. Remember, continue with Telesur, always connecting our global thoughts. And of course, follow us on our website, telesurenglish.net. Until next time.